Now, if you don't understand what I'm doing, problem, you know, just try this and see. Fold one edge down, take the other edge and flip it over and look for the finished edge right at the corner. Before I stitch anything else, I'm going to insert my panel in the middle. I didn't use pad stitching, so um, this quilt square is so small it doesn't require pad stitching. To begin, I'm only going to put the basting tape a little bit past the dots. So it'll be from one end to a little past the dots and then I'll stop because I want this end to not stick to anything when I turn a corner. I usually only peel the tape as I'm approaching the corners. I do alternating um, edges. So this side's taped, this side will be skipped, that side will be taped. That's a little bit past center, but it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Just um, don't allow it to stick way past the center point. Okay. I'm going to start here. So I'm actually going to fold my um, beveled edge to begin with because I won't have an easy time doing it as soon as I start sewing. So I'm going to fold that in place. Now it's in place. And I'm going to fold it down. But I'm actually not going to start sewing till about here. So this is just going to be temporarily held in place. Then when I come around this corner, I'm just going to reach up, tuck that in, and, and sew around the corner. So I start sewing here. As I approach this, I pull off the basting tape, make that nice fold, see how some of the material doesn't get caught in the basting tape after the centering dots, and that's exactly what I want. Just try it, it works really well. I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna remove the basting tape as I approach this, fold the fold, and complete the turn. Okay, well, I'm going to try and show this from my sewing machine. I hope you can ignore the absolute disasters behind all the stitching. Here goes. So I have a walking foot on. I'm stitching at a stitch length of four because nothing here can, rem you know, can uh, fray. So that's really good. So I'm going to start about a, um, at least a third of the way down, I would say. Now I'm approaching this, this beveled edge, so I'm going to peel off my basting tape now. And I'm just going to fold under the edge that has to be folded and a little bit of the edge that is going to remain as flat as possible. So I'm holding that in place with tape, holding this in place, a lot of things going on there. Okay, see that edge is taken care of. Now I fold this up. Have my beveled edges meet and I'll do some tidying up once my needle is in the fabric of the beveled edge. Also, if you have a plant and pivot uh, mechanism on your sewing machine, that's fabulous help. I readjusted the camera. Hopefully you can see a little better. I'm going to try and tease this out a little bit. Sometimes the one problem with using basting tape is it's difficult to get the piece to change shape once it's taped. So that can be a little bit of a problem. So I'm going to try and tease it out a little because I think it would look nicer. And I'm going to also tuck in this other side. I'm going to hold that down and stitch it down. Let's see. I can't get some of this to come out a little. With the tape on, it makes it more difficult. So that's the one disadvantage of using the tape. I'm just making sure my walking foot is engaged. Sometimes it does come out and stop um, using the walking foot mechanism.
Okay, I'm going to pivot and come back. I'm going to um, jump across because I kind of missed that fold. Like I said, this would not be, that jump wouldn't be obvious in the right color thread. This one's going to be a lot easier to see, I think. See, I missed that whole spot, but I'm just going to go back and collect it now. Uh, yeah, I might take one stitch this way and then continue. Because remember, normally I'd be sewing this with navy blue thread. Okay, so this shows the disadvantage of using double-sided tape. You're kind of almost locked into where the fold is. So I would try and avoid it. But sometimes it's the best way to manage the fabric. This part normally is a better suit. It's better suited for a stiletto, but I don't happen to have my stiletto here, so I'm making everything work, even though I don't have a pointy stiletto, which I prefer to use when I'm doing this particular part. Also, at this end, there's nothing holding the back of my um, presser foot, so um, I occasionally put a buttonhole reed, a button reed underneath it. It's not a buttonhole reed; it's a button reed to support the presser foot on those corners where there's nothing to support it, and that helps your stitches move along smoothly. Okay. Okay, I pull my threads to the back and tie them in a knot and then I thread them with a needle through my quilt. So I tie up all my loose ends. I'm going to do something peculiar. I usually reach inside of the um, quilt sash and pull. And you can see I have both my bobbin thread and my needle thread. I pull them through and tuck them underneath. And that way I don't feel like I have to tuck them I just tuck the threads from the, uh, from, I just have to tuck one set of threads. So those threads are now handled. I'll trim them in a minute, but I'm going to fold this under and complete this frame. I call it a frame. It's sashing. So 
So I usually end my stitches on top of where I began, and then I pull my threads to the back, tie them in a knot, and thread them through the back with a needle. So this is the finished quilt block after we've done everything, and you can add more when you're ready.